Hey guys, Gable from Ungraceful Toad and today I have a bit of a random piece. I was just browsing through eBay the other day and I saw someone selling this gem Naruto piece at an absolute steal. I've seen this piece go from anywhere from $150 to $300 and I found it for just under 100 Great British Pounds from a guy who appeared to be selling off most of his collection. And it's, it was just amazing to me that it was at such a good price and to order a figure and then have it come two days later was just really strange when we're used to selling and waiting for months and the guy even threw in this bonus through this Naruto keychain so a nice guy to deal with uh, it's a shame that obviously he's getting out of the hobby but I'm glad I could give him some money for his pieces so uh, this is a limited run uh, exclusive piece of uh, all the gem pieces are obviously a Naruto piece and it's a 1 8th scale created by Mega House as you will see down here we have the sticker for Mega House so it's quite a big box, and at the front there's nothing too special going on with the logos up in the corner, the name, and the mode. Unfortunately this is in European I believe, so it's a bit off. So this is a European box, so the wording would be a bit, a bit different. On the side here we have this cool cut out of the symbols given to him, uh, as seen on the back there. Given to him by the Sage of Six Paths, and you'll see all that iconography around there. And then we have another large image of one of the heads. And then this is the second head, which I believe is what makes it exclusive, is we have this second head. But I think I'm more of a fan of this head, and obviously this is a clone of the other side. But it's a nice little detail that we have these cutouts, and a clear window. And then, not only do we have that clear window, up here at the top, we have another clear window again, with his name, and the mode. So there's quite a few sub-pieces to this one. So I'm going to open it up, show you all the sub-pieces, and then I'll put it together. So guys, I figure I'll just quickly show you the pieces. So the first more basic piece, we just have one of the staffs here, just a simple black rod. Nothing too amazing going on there. And we have his second hand accessory, which is another rod, but we have these, the clear plastic with these, you know, what's meant to be appearing as floating balls, which will go in his other hand. And then the most important accessory piece here is our exclusive head. Now, what I really like about this piece, which is something I didn't realise at first, when I first saw it, I wasn't fussed on it, and then I took closer looks, and it's the way this clear plastic is done. It's the way it hits the light. It's got this amazing colour variation going on within this plastic. And you see it coming out, and there's these parts of his headband flare. Everything about it, I just think, it's super well done. This headband too, yeah, it isn't just a flat colour, there's a fade. And within the symbol, it's obviously done with a wash, but it's just done incredibly well. It's great, you can see the detail here on the kunai. It is really well done lettering. And then on his face, you've got the detail in his eyes, of his sage mode, and just really clean paintwork all around. Everything about this, I think, is just done brilliantly well. So then I've just clicked the base into the character just to save a little bit of time. So we've got the name there. And these circles and symbol that we've seen quite a lot and then just a quick look at the body before we put any accessories on with this head sculpt on let's zoom in on that so i think i prefer this head sculpt it just seems a bit more narrow so that's nice and ugly and you know the same level of detail with the hair and the headband it's all done incredibly well so i'm going to put the accessories on now and we'll take another look at them so all assembled now, and I think he looks absolutely brilliant. Um, so let's let's take sort of a bottom down look at him. So consistently, the fading on where they've done the orange, it's really well done. This has probably been done with an airbrush, and then faded out with a wash. It's hard to do in this light, but it's incredibly well done. You can see the sculpting he's done on his toes. We've got easy pegging into the bottom. And then actually one of my favourite aspects, which it might be seen as one of the most unimpressive, is the way they've done this matte black. There's just this very slight fade to it that is really hard to pick up on the camera. But as you can see it in the light, there is this matte fading into a sort of lighter grey, which I think is done incredibly well. And was one of the aspects that made me go, yeah, I want to own this piece. So if we move up, we have the symbols here, and the symbol for sun, as opposed to Sasuke's moon. That you know, with the inside of a jacket done really well. I feel like the inside of a jacket could have been done very cheaply with the clear PVC on the other side. 
but it could have come through as sort of semi-transparent and that would have looked really naff. But as we take a look at the jacket around the back, we have a sort of semi-translucent colour with, I don't think these are transfers, I think they've been either transferred on, they even had the plastic board on top, or something's definitely gone on because we don't have like this sticky sort of look of transfers, especially up here, where there's, it's been put on top of a crease, it doesn't look as you'd expect a transfer to look. But this, this cape looks brilliant and I don't think the cameras and the lighting is really giving it enough justice. But it just looks absolutely amazing. And we've got all this detail of things bending up and you really feel like the chakra bursting out from him. So we'll take a quick look up at the head sculpt. As said earlier, everything about this head sculpt is just done absolutely brilliantly. They've really captured Naruto in a very clean and well done manner. And Again, with like the jacket, the hair, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Uh, my only slight complaint, and I think it's, I don't, this is a sealed piece, but these sticks, some of the painting is a bit thin in some areas, but from a little distance away, you can't really see it. And I don't think on the camera you can see it, but there's a slight mottling where some of the paints come off. But, you know, that's just, that's just the way of life, isn't it? So, that's my only very slight complaint when it comes to paint on this. So, I'm going to swap the head out so we can take a look at that. And then we'll do some sizing and some comparisons. So the head, very easy to swap out and I think it gives him a very different look. It's far more sort of action, serious man, that was a bit of a fluff there. But I think this is a very different look and looking at it now, it's very nice. Um, one of my favourite features, as I said before, is the text on top, which is kind of hard to see from there. But it's just, that's done incredibly well with the eyebrows and the clearness of the face paint it's just done absolutely phenomenally which is why I can see this piece goes for so much which is again why I'm so happy with the steel the price I got on it but I definitely think this is a slightly more Naruto-esque head it's just the cockiness and he really did come to save the day at this point in the anime so I feel like I'm definitely going to stick with this head but maybe this head will see an appearance but there's definitely no difference in the quality of the head as a paint job and a sculpt at all. But this is definitely my favourite head. So let's do some size comparisons and we'll measure them up. So as I said earlier, this is 1 8 scale, but it's a lot taller than some of my JoJo's 1 8 scales. Let's take a look at its exact measurements. So from the bottom of the base to the highest point, which is one of these circles that's orbiting him, it's about 8.5, just shy of... No, 8.75, just shy of 9 inches which is 22 centimeters tall. His widest point actually seems to be the base, it doesn't look like this part of the coat flares out much higher than the base, much wider than the base, which gives him a width of about 11 centimeters, which is about 4.5 inches. The depth, because of this rod, we're going to go from the very back of the base to the end of that rod is 14 centimeters, which is about 5.5 inches. So here he is on a dead off shelf by himself, and as you can see, he's very large for a one eighth. And I think once you get him on a riser a bit higher up, and he's nearer the light strips, he's going to look real good. Here he is next to one sixth scale Joto Akujo from a recent video, so you can see just how big for a one eighth this guy is. And here he is next to his dad, which is Minato by Sume Arts. So again, you get a good idea about that. This guy's quite a tall figure. So that pretty much sums him up. I have. Literally damn near nothing other than the thinning paint on the black rods negative to say about this guy. I think the thing that makes him so great is the great execution of the paint on the matte black that covers most of his body from, you know, his trousers onto his t-shirt and onto his gloves. And then the execution of the clear plastic and, I don't know, the transfers or the painted over stuff that's used under the jacket on the back as we saw earlier. That makes this piece absolutely brilliant. I mean, every time I look at that, I'm blown away by how good it looks. So, for sure, the thing that makes this piece so good is the fact that Mega House's execution on paint, sculpting, and material is just absolutely A plus in every box. And that's why it's a gem piece, and the price can become so ridiculous. So, I recommend this piece to anyone who loves Naruto, but like me, and my advice for any gem piece, keep your eye on all the secondary markets. And look for that good deal. And there is definitely counterfeiting of this figure around. So be extremely careful. But like me if you use eBay. And you receive a counterfeit product. You can file a claim and get your money back. 
uh, just be sure you have the checklist of what the counterfeits are doing, what the real figure isn't, so you can tick those boxes and say, yes, this is clearly a counterfeit because of this, this, and this, and provide photo evidence. But all in all, this piece absolutely stunning and I recommend it to absolutely any fan of Naruto or anyone who just wants a really outstanding piece. So that's been my review, um, stay tuned for the next one and have a good one.